Today I want to take a look at some effective uses of scientific notation in vPython. Uh, this video is inspired by a post from Winston Osbrooks. Winston, thank you for your question over here on Facebook. Uh, Winston is looking at uh, how we can do rounding in vPython. Um, and I want to talk about that, uh, but first I want to take a look at some of the scientific notation that Winston is using here. Uh, Winston's using scientific notation in the nice compact form. This is how you want to use uh, your scientific notation. Let me show you what a lot of students or a lot of new programmers try to do is they try to write it out the way they see it in their textbook. So for example, suppose you're trying to calculate gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon. So the gravitational force magnitude is gravitational constant times m1 times m2 divided by the distance between them squared. So I've got all those numbers placed in here. I've got g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 uh, newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. So this is the gravitational gravitation constant. That's the same throughout the universe, not to be confused with little g, which is local to us here on Earth. Uh, here we've got the mass of the sun. I just looked that up. Uh, here we've got the mass of the Earth. Again, I just looked that up. And here we've got the distance between the sun and the Earth. Again, I just looked that up. Let me close my Google search window there. There we go. Um, so the way you calculate this, again, is just through the gravitational formula here. Um, and this will give you the correct answer. If you hit control two, this will run. It'll give you the correct answer. It'll give you uh, 3.55733 E22 Newtons. Now what the E means, it stands in place of times 10 to the. So whenever you have this E here, it means times 10 to the. And in fact, not only will GlowScript or vPython output an E for you, but it also understands what that E means if you write it in the code. So for example, right now, we have uh, all of this stuff here. We have asterisk, one, zero, double asterisk to indicate that scientific notation. And when you're doing problems like these, you have to enter that a lot, right? Each one of these has a different exponent to it, so we can't just cancel out the exponents from beforehand. We have to include those, and that gets pretty tedious to type. Especially, who knows, if you accidentally, oops, yeah, if you accidentally uh, delete the whole thing, um, if you accidentally, while you're, uh, typing this type of double asterisk and then a double asterisk, I mean, that's that's going to be a ridiculous number because that's 6.67 raised to the power of 10 to the minus 11, not times 10 to the minus 11. Or what if you accidentally uh, put in just one asterisk here? That's going to be 6.67 times 10 times negative 11. So that's going to give you a negative 600 something. Uh, that's, that's not going to be good either. So as a shorthand, uh, vPython understands that you can replace all five of these characters with just an E. Um, and so this is similar to on your graphing calculator. Your graphing calculator probably has a capital E button or a double E button where you can replace all that and it saves you keystrokes during an exam or it saves you, uh, you know, having to type through all these things. You can just replace these with E's. And vPython will understand that that means times 10 to the and it's nice because it also chunks this together as one number. Those were all previously separate numbers. This is now all chunked together as one number. So let's go back. Let's keep in mind our answer. So our answer is 3.55 times 10 to the 20 second. Okay, so let's remember 3.55 times 10 to the 20 second. We should get the same answer. Lo and behold, we do 3.55 times 10 to the 20 second. Hooray. And speaking of the answer, this is a very long answer. Um, this is probably more significant figures than your uh, than your than your instructor wants you to be reporting. Um, I'll be honest; I don't harp on significant digits a lot because, in my mind, after you get to about three digits, the number isn't changing by more than you know one or two percent. Um, and so, I I usually don't care for my students to. Uh, write these for longer than about three digits anyway. And so um, uh, Winston's original question was, how can I round these things? And Winston tried using the round function here, uh, which is a built-in function. The problem is that it's built in to always round to the nearest integer. So if you put in round 1.5, it's going to round that, actually I guess I need to do a print, don't I? If you put that in, 
GlowScript's built-in round function goes to the nearest integer. So there it rounds to a two. If I make that a four nine, it's gonna round that to a one. Um, and there's really not a way to get it to round to 1.5. Intuitively, you would think that, uh, that you would wanna put in two for two decimal places, but it basically ignores that and says, no, I round to the nearest integer. And so I responded and I tried to hack together something that would separate the exponent in number times 10 to the power uh, and basically try to turn that into a, a rounding function and it worked. And then other viewer Brandon Nash came along and said that we can use this formatting statement to get the thing rounded to the number of decimal places that you like. So what I can do here is instead of having to worry about that or instead of having to hack together my own thing, let's copy and paste this. He's got the rounded version equals to this argument of the, or this function of the original one. So let's call this one the rounded force, rounded roach, rounded force, there we go. So I tell it how many decimal places I want it to have. I tell it that I want it to be in scientific notation with this E here, and then I just place in the, um, the force variable here. And let's double check his uh, his text here. Um, the three, sp three specifies the number of decimal places being rounded so you can replace it as desired, right? So if I want three decimal places, so if I put in this, I should be getting 3.56 times 10 to the 22. Let's see if that works for us. Oh, right, I have to print the original. I have to print the thing, excuse me. Let's print, uh, copy and paste. Call this rounded force equals rounded force. There we go. Control two. Okay, and lo and behold, okay, yeah, I do get it. Excuse me, I get it to three decimal places, not to three significant digits. So if I just wanted the 3.56, I would put this in as a two and I place this like this. Wonderful. Okay, so now we know how to round things. It's a little bit of an odd structure here, like that's not intuitively how you would think about it. So that's why I make sure to make these codes available so that you can copy and paste that as you need it. Um, I suppose if you wanted to, you could try to figure out a way to make that into a callable function, but I mean, it's, it's nice if it's in one line, so that's good. Um, and so this is nice because you don't have to know you know, to how many, uh, uh, you know, digits or decimal places around it to, you tell it to display it as a scientific notation and you tell it how many uh, digits to include in this base number here before getting to the power. So thank you again to uh, Winston and Brandon for your input on that. Uh, we now have a video about uh, scientific notation and rounding. And I thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.